With most campus tragedies happening in high schools, there's a lot of focus on improving mental health services for teenagers. But a longtime expert in the field at Texas Tech University says shaping a child's brain starts at birth. As part of our Save Our Students project this week, KXAN investigator Erin Cargill is here to explain what she learned about relationships and attachment. Robert, I learned a lot. We first met Dr. Ann Master George at South by EDU earlier this year. This is video of her on a panel talking about infant brain development, which she's been researching for more than 25 years. After that, I made the trip to Lubbock to sit down with her to learn more. She told me when it comes to how our mind develops, think about a tennis match. That back and forth to serve and return is very similar to what happens as soon as we come out of the womb. A baby cries, a mother responds. A baby coos, a mother responds. A baby smiles, a mother responds. If there is a mother who is absent, neglectful, depressed, the baby doesn't get this, what we call serve and return. And Dr. Master George says as time goes on, a child without a primary attachment figure in their life can have toxic stress. Adverse life experiences continue adding up, and that coupled with a child who has no tools to deal with the stress in a healthy way can lead to even more problems. So the earlier someone positive shows up in a child's life and demonstrates what a healthy relationship looks like, the better. She calls them buffers. Those buffers can be a neighbor a grandparent or a teacher. Mental health is a very complex entity, but the ways in which you can connect with individuals is very simple. So for example, in preschools, teachers often greet every student who walks in the classroom and they have a choice of whether to do a high five or a hug or a fist bump. What happens is we oftentimes we coddle and hug and interact with very young children and then in our culture we seem to stop at a particular point in time like you don't need school age children they don't, they don't need that. We don't need to talk to them. They're fine. But in fact they're, they, they need that. Erin, what are some of the programs she says work? Well, Robert, she didn't want to get too specific, but she said school-wide initiatives work the best, which involve the family and the home environment. And some of those programs we are highlighting this week line up with that description. And you can see those stories all week here on KXAN, on air and online. Erin, thanks. Mm -hmm. Online now, explore our digital project, Save Our Students, Solutions for Wellness and Safety. See why we're taking a closer look at this important topic. Stories from across the nation, in-depth conversations with the school workers on the front line, interactive analysis of what's happening with mental health and your children, plus community outreach and resources to get help for your family. It's all online now at SaveOurStudentsTX.com. And this Monday, August 26th at 7 p.m., join us at the Stony Point High School Auditorium in Round Rock for a conversation to save our students, solutions for wellness and safety. This special live event will feature school district leaders and mental health experts from across Central Texas. We'll be answering audience questions and sharing thoughts on innovative ideas to protect your children on campus. You can find details at KXAN.com.